Hail Hydra. 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 And welcome back to a special Weird Future comic talk. I'm Matt Kay, and today I'm going to be talking about Captain Hydra. I mean, America. So two new comics came out today, Captain America Steve Rogers 10 and Civil War 2 The Oath. And while it may not seem like it, these two comics are linked together and act as a prologue for big things to come in the Marvel Universe. Currently in Nick Spencer's Captain America, we found out that our age-old hero is actually a deep cover Hydra agent that has been manipulating a mix of events in order to assure Hydra takes over. Now, for those of you who haven't been keeping up, you're probably wondering how did Captain America the Sentinel of Liberty possibly be a Hydra agent. It all started during the event Avengers Standoff, an event involving S.H.I.E.L.D. director Maria Hill utilizing a sentient cosmic cube named Kobik to brainwash supervillains into thinking they were a simple small town community, which will play a role in this story. During the event, Steve Rogers, who was an old man at the time, due to the loss of the super soldier formula, is rejuvenated back to youth by Kobik under the orders of the Red Skull. This return changed his past, making him an agent of Hydra since he was a child, with everything being planned including receiving the Super Soldier formula. Now Spencer has been on the receiving end of a lot of criticism, however I for one have been really enjoying it. Captain America has been aligned with Hydra and is a ruthless tactician. It's cool to see this guy's plans in action. At the end of the day, it's just a story and we all know that Cap is going to go back to his American roots, but until then just... Enjoy the story for all the thrills. Anyways, you guys are all caught up with what's going on. Let's jump into the first issue, Captain America 10. Now, the issue actually has two stories, one involving how a young Steve Rogers has to get close to Dr. Abraham Erskine. Erskine, oh god, that's gonna, that's gonna suck. The creator of the Super Soldier formula. And two, the aftermath of the trial of Maria Hill. Now, the first part of the story is pretty interesting. It shows that uh, history has changed when we see that Steve actually meets the good doctor and a general in a diner that he is working in, which is all just a ploy just to speak to him. He gets his chance and he explains to Erskine that it's not fair, that he's just sitting here while his brothers are fighting, which is weird because it mirrors what he said back in the original history, except this time we have a sinister twist. A mugger comes in and steals the waitress's purse, and Steve runs after him, stating every chance is a chance to show what you're made of, even though he's a skinny guy who's probably going to get his ass handed to him. And he does. However, he gets the purse back and wins the respect of the doctor, who declares to the general that this is their candidate for the super soldier serum. Back to the present, we see that Maria Hill was declared guilty and loses her position as director of S.H.I.E.L.D. We see that the council takes a moment to ask Captain America who he believes would be a good fit for the next director, and he states that Sharon Carter, his longtime lover, would be the good fit. While this is happening, Hill decides to make a famous Nick Fury-esque escape and take the S.H.I.E.L.D., a planetary force field, to Alpha Flight headed by Captain Marvel. Steve is forced through a lecture by Red Skull, who is angry he let Hill get away, and is tired of his loose ends such as Jack Flagg being in a coma, and tells him to deal with it. Jack Flagg was another patriotic superhero working with Captain America in issue 1, Cap pushes him off the plane to his supposed death, but he just ends up in a coma. Steve goes to inject poison in Jack's IV drip, finally killing the hero before he is interrupted by Kathy or Liberty Bell. Honestly, I forget her superhero name. Suddenly patriotic, I think. Uh, she tells him that she's decided to turn off the machines, keeping him alive, before telling him how Jack always looked up to him and all he ever wanted was to be his Bucky. And that in, in the end, this would have been how he wanted to go out one last mission with Captain America. Steve returns home to Sharon Carter, where he inquires about the job interview for the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. position, but things didn't turn out like he would have thought. It turns out the amount of power the director has is terrifying to Sharon, especially with the S.H.I.E.L.D. Act, a piece of legislation that allows S.H.I.E.L.D. to be the first line of defense against all terrorist and doomsday threats. That's when we get the news that the next director is going to be Cap himself. Civil War II, The Oath, picks up right after this issue and deals with Steve becoming the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Fun fact, this is actually the second time he's been the director, with the first happening during the heroic age in 2010, however this time it seems to be a bigger deal. It starts off with a new director entering the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier and sitting down to talk with a quote-unquote dead Tony Stark. There's a lot of dialogue so I'm just, I'm just gonna break it down for you guys. 
Steve discusses how Stark had lost sight of what he was fighting for, and that a lot of the battles he was fighting were now with other heroes. He continues on stating that Stark always felt like he had trouble inspiring people, but that was because he couldn't do it himself. He instead thought about himself instead of the people. He talks about Captain Marvel explaining how she's becoming just like Stark, and that she has the need to feel loved. However, in the end, she will end up being hated. Kat makes a point to say that after the Second Civil War, the people decided, and they are tired of the threats and the constant changes to the world, that the superheroes are just moving too damn fast for them. Finally, we get the revelation that this Captain America has every memory from before, and admits all the time Tony Stark had thought he had beaten him, he was just letting Stark win, and that this time he's going to destroy everything he's built, so Stark better wake up and try to stop him. Also in this issue, we see Steve finally take his place as director, which is pretty similar to the presidential inauguration, but I think the dialogue with Tony was the most important part. In the end, we see some images of a world controlled by Hydra, a world Steve Rogers, Captain America, plans to bring about. All that's left is the Secret Empire. So there you guys go, chilling stuff. The fact that the population and the government have decided to put their faith in Captain Hydra and make him head of the world's premier peacekeeping organization really shows that shit is gonna hit. I feel like the oath shows Captain America's true colors, all his schemes have led to this, and the reveal that he now remembers everything and plans on still going through with it is intense. He's done playing games, and he plans on showing the world what a super soldier can really do. One interesting thing I noticed were uh, these ships in this panel here. They look a little familiar, and when I went back to the end of Civil War II, with Ulysses' vision of the future, we see this image after Hydra has taken over. Secret Empire is the next big Marvel event, and we know that it'll deal with Captain Hydra's plans coming together. However, what if this is the first event where there isn't a resolution? What if these ships are the same ships we see in this picture from Civil War II, with Killraven and Medusa uh, just fighting back? What if this is a world taken over by Hydra, and that becomes the status quo, and we see heroes on the run, you know, we get a guy like Killraven, the, the dude with the sword, coming into prominence to fight back with the rebellion. A lot of you might say this plot is similar to Dark Reign, a previous Marvel event, where Norman Osborn becomes top cop and a lot of heroes are forced into hiding, but I think this might be a little different. For one thing, we have Cap being the ultimate betrayer, the face of Hydra here, and I'm talking a world radically changed, a brand new world under Hydra, that would be the twist Marvel needs. Now if you guys are interested, Captain America's Steve Rogers 11 will be on sale February 15th and it looks like Zemo is causing trouble. Other than that, keep a lookout for Secret Empire, the spring Marvel event. Like always, like, comment, subscribe, and hail Hydra.